There's an African proverb that reads, when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. When you refuse to allow any doubts in your own mind, then no doubts from others will ever cloud your judgment. When you create a strong mind, there can be no other that will defeat you with their words or with their judgments. When you believe in you, you need no other to believe in you. Because others really have no say in who you will become. Only you have that say. Only you can decide if others' opinions become reality or you create your own fate. The greatest challenge and the greatest obstacle any human will face is their own doubts, their own fears, and their own conditioned thoughts. If you want to live your dream, you will have to fight for it. You will have to fight the greatest battles of your life. You will have to battle the external enemy. People who don't believe in you. People who do you wrong. People who put you down. You will have to battle the intimate enemy. Those close to you who might do you wrong, or maybe you assume don't believe in you. Those who want the best for you, but their idea of support is to remind you of what can't be done or shouldn't be attempted. But the worst of all is the internal enemy. You will have to battle what seems like an army in your own head, an army of doubt, fear of failure, fear of judgment, lack of belief. The voices inside the head saying, I am not good enough. I'm not worthy. I want to do this, but I can't. I want to give to those I love, but I can't. I'm not worthy of love. I'll never be able to do this. I am hopeless. I've tried everything. The world is against me. No one believes in me. My life's not worth living. There is no greater pain that can be inflicted on you than your own internal enemy. Your own thoughts will cause you more pain than anyone or anything. They can be likened to a terrorist living in your soul. But when you learn to control and direct your mind, you can direct that internal voice to work for you rather than against you. You get it to work for you by creating a compelling future. A future you will be proud to achieve, proud to live through. You do this by not just having goals, but having meaningful goals. Goals that get you excited to wake up every morning. You do this by understanding what your purpose in life really is. What are you doing it all for? When you know these things, when you work on yourself daily, you can quiet that voice in your head. You can feel good enough because you are good enough. But it does take a commitment, a commitment of daily practice to work on yourself. Cut out something that you spend a lot of time on that does nothing good for your life and replace it with daily work on you. Empower yourself. Set your life up to win. And confidence is not something you have, it's something you create. And you can create it at any moment in time. A sense of confidence is nothing but a sense of power within yourself, a sense of certainty that you can pull something off. And you can create that feeling literally in a moment. It's not something that you live with. There is no one that I've ever met that no matter what situation they're in is always confident. Everybody gets knocked off kilter at times. The key is can you turn the confidence on when you need it so you can get the most out of yourself? Does that make sense so far? So you've got to remember that feeling confident is nothing but a state of mind. 
and you can change and create any state you want at any moment in time no matter what's going on around you you've got to remember that any feeling you've ever had in your body whether it be fear anxiety concern depression frustration or ecstasy power unstoppability confidence success those emotions any emotion you feel comes from the way you use your physical body the only way you can feel anything is by the way you move the way you breathe your facial expressions so if you're not feeling confident you don't have to intellectually try and pump yourself up because it doesn't always work I'm sure you've tried at times to go well I need to be confident I know I should be confident but you're still not there well, let me tell you, the quickest way to get confident is to change your physiology radically. Emotion is created by motion. The way you move your body physically, the way you breathe, your facial expressions, instantly affects your emotional state, the way you feel, and the way you think. So if you need confidence, you must move in a confident way. You must literally put yourself at level 10 or above. If you're confident enough, you can develop the confidence. But if you're competent, and you don't have confidence, you'll never succeed. There are many competent people who could accomplish incredible results, but they're missing the confidence. Am I suggesting to you to be foolhardy? No. What I'm suggesting to you is learn how to turn on the confidence rapidly. Use enough of it to learn what you need to know to be competent and effective and produce the results. But you'd be surprised how much more you know than you realize if you really get yourself in the right state of mind. Does that make sense? Try it. Try moving your body in a confident way. Stand the way you'd be standing if you felt unstoppably confident. Breathe the way you'd be breathing if you felt unstoppably confident. Really go for it. Put the kind of expression on your face like you'd have if you were unstoppably confident. And make some gestures. Actually, move your hands out with some power as if you're trying to make a point with real power and where you know that what you're going to say is going to be effective. And just notice how that feels. Say something. Say yes in the tone of voice of somebody who is totally confident. Don't go, yes, 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 yes. Yes, with some power. And just feel how it feels in your body. Get a sense of it. Turn on more intensity than you would normally use with another person. Just feel it in your body so you feel what it's like. You want to be able to turn it on just by turning your body on. This is critical. With this as a power, you can go from being afraid to strong in a matter of moments. Now try something really stupid and silly. Using your physical body effectively can put you in a state of confidence no matter what was happening around you. No matter how intense the situation, no matter how scary, no matter how difficult, you always have that resource. Don't ever say to yourself again, well, I just don't have enough confidence. Break out of that shell. If you don't feel like you have confidence, create it right now. It's not a thing that somebody gave you years ago. It's not something you missed out on. It's something you create by the way you speak, by the way you move, by the way you gesture control your mental focus remember what you focus on is going to determine how you feel so if you focus constantly on how things might not work out and you look at in your brain all the possibilities of well what if this doesn't work or what if that doesn't happen if that's your mental focus of course you're going to lack confidence remember we experience whatever we focus on so if you're focusing on how things won't work you're going to feel the pain that you associate to that you're going to create a tremendous amount of doubt, and then it usually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You don't get what you want. But when you expect and focus on one result and you say, this is what it is, I'm going to accomplish this, I expect it, immediately your level of self-confidence goes up and you feel active immediately because your brain says, hey, if I do this, I can get some pleasure in my life. Does that make sense? That's the process we're talking about. We must control our focus. And one way to do it, of course, is to control our focus by controlling the questions we ask ourselves. Invariably, people who have a lot of doubt ask questions of creative. If you walk around in life believing that the only way you can feel confident is if you've already accomplished something, you got a problem. You're limiting yourself to the number of things you can ever feel confident about and succeed. In other words, some people say, well, how can I be confident when I've never done it before? Listen, I feel confident in all kinds of things I've never done before. You say, well, that's because you're screwed up. <laughs> no, that's not why it is. It's because I come from a belief system that says this that if I can imagine it, I can achieve it. So if I can even imagine it, I know I can achieve it, and that allows me to be confident. Plus, I have a belief system that says, if I'm committed, there's always a way to make it work. And no matter how tough the situation is, if I don't know how to make it work, somebody else does, and I can get their help. So I come from that place, and that allows me to be confident. I know I can get help. I know if I'm committed, there's a way to do it. 
And I know that anything in the past I've really been able to imagine accomplishing and finding a role model for, I can't accomplish. Hey, listen, everything you do now, you once weren't good at. Everything you do now, there was a time when you had not done it. Why wait to get confident? Besides that, I know I can be confident about what I'm about to begin because I know, look, if it doesn't work out, I'll learn something. And that makes me feel confident because that learning will allow me to be better in the future. In other words, set yourself up to be able to be confident. Again, I'm not suggesting be foolhardy. I'm just telling you how to turn confidence on when you need it. And most of the time, you do need it. What's the potential of any human being? I personally believe it absolutely is unlimited. None of us even come close to scratching our real potential. There are a lot of people who go out there and take a lot of action and still get lousy results. Why? Action by itself is great, but it is not enough. Success starts with our beliefs. That is the core of your performance. Think about it. See, the potential is there, but if for some reason you start out with some limiting beliefs like, well, I don't have that much self-confidence anyway, or I don't have the background, or I've never done this before, so I probably won't succeed anyway, if you have that belief, are you likely to tap a lot of your potential? Highly unlikely. Now, if you don't think you're going to succeed and you're not using much potential, are you likely to take massive action? Hardly. Now, when you tap a little bit of potential and you only take a little bit of action, what kind of results do you get? A little bit of results, if any. Now, what does that do to your brain and your beliefs? Your brain goes, see, I told you so. And now you have this reinforcing belief pattern because it points back to that experience. So what happens? You have even less belief. You tap even less potential. You take even less action if that's possible. You get even worse results. And now you're truly locked into the downward spiral to the point where now you start looking at how can you do the very least to get by. That's called death rattle to personal success. The opposite is also true, too. Sometimes people have an experience in life where for some reason they get a result or something happens and they begin to absolutely believe, not just hope, but know that they can accomplish something. When that happens, whether it's because you changed your body or you had a new experience, you're going to tap a lot more potential when you know you're going to succeed, aren't you? And therefore, you're going to probably take a lot more action. Knowing you're going to succeed, you're inspired, you're going to go for it. When you take a lot of action and use a lot of your potential, what kind of results do you get? Usually great results. When you get great results, what does that do to your belief? Your brain goes, <clears throat> see, I told you you would succeed. And sure enough, now your beliefs are even stronger. So what do you do? You tap even more potential. You take massive action and you get even greater results. What happens? Your beliefs are even stronger. And now you're in that success cycle. You're in that place where you literally have momentum that drives you to a whole new level. That's how beliefs are formed. You might say, well, how can I get results, though? What do I do if I'm on the downward spiral? Well, you don't change your potential. That's always there. You don't just take action, although that's a great first step. You've got to change your beliefs, and one of the easiest ways to do that is change your results in advance. If you want to succeed, you need to rehearse over and over succeeding until it's so real for you, your brain begins to believe it. Now you'll tap more potential, you'll take better action, and in real life, you'll get better results. Then it'll reinforce your belief, and now you're off and running. Does this make sense? This is the way to create lifelong, unstoppable self-confidence. If you really want to be confident, know what causes people to lack in it. Focusing too much on yourself and not enough on other people will guarantee that you'll lack confidence. What do I mean? I mean some people lack confidence because they pick themselves apart. They spend all day, every day, analyzing themselves. Why did I do this? Why don't I do that? How come I never accomplish these things? They ask lousy questions, they get lousy answers, and they create a tremendous amount of self-doubt. Do you want to have more confidence? Stop analyzing yourself so much and focus on other people and how you can contribute to them. And as you start giving to other people, you'll feel more confident about what you can even do for yourself. Does that make sense? And finally this. You can feel confident if all you do is remember some of the things you've accomplished in your life. You are a successful, competent person. You've done a lot of things in your life extremely well. No matter who you are or what your background is, there are things in this world that you are really good at, things you've really accomplished in your life that you've got to be proud of. Every human being I meet, I know, is my superior. Because I know all of us in life have focused our attention on various things, and whatever you've focused on a lot, you're good at. And every human being I meet in my life, I know that I'm superior to in some way as well. And that makes me feel confident as well, knowing I can learn from other people and that I can give too. So in order to help yourself really have reasons to feel confident, not just put yourself in state, but to feel like you've got reasons, all you've got to do is manage your memories better. Pull out some of your memories 
of tough situations in your life where you didn't think you could pull it off, but you turned it around. You have some of those, don't you? Situations where you thought, I could never figure a way to pull this off, and yet you did. You need to remember more of those and less of the times when you felt overwhelmed. Pull out of your memory file some of the references that can show you that you deserve to be confident, that you're confident and confident that you can make things happen even in the toughest of times. And use those examples to remind yourself in the future that whatever's going on, you can find a way.